Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent » et « Comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec hey, Glendon Cameron. Hopefully you are having a wonderful and productive day. A few announcements. I had to do this because people don't know what's going on. I have quite a bit of training out and I actually have more training that is coming. I'm experimenting with something. Yes, I'm experimenting. I am, you were in my sandbox. You just didn't know it. So if that's why there is sand in your ass, you're in my sandbox. When I put out an offer, that's what's called the pre-sale, the pre-offer, the beta project, which means I'm developing and creating projects. That's when you want to buy in. Uh, typically, after the pre-sale is over, the price goes up. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this, because this is an exercise. This is an exercise. Many people feel that they must race down to the bottom. Price, 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 price. I have actually managed to start with a low price and raise it by creating value. There's a lesson to be learned there. And this is what happens when you create your own thing. What we'll be talking about going forward is creating your own thing. I put out for a long time, many months, most of this year, starting last year, I no longer recommend eBay and Amazon. Love Amazon, we'll probably buy some stuff there today. However, it doesn't give you the control that you need to have in terms of gaining metrics, knowing what's going on with the customer, owning the customer that you should have to have a better business. It's their business model, it's their sandbox, it's their rules. Not mad at them. Don't like the game, so I don't play it. So with that, that's what's going to happen with many of the courses and stuff that are going on for the rest of the year. If you see an offer, and you will see an offer, best place to be is on my email list, which you get on when you get the free audiobook, and you'll be abreast. And if you ignore, there were six people who ignored the offer, and after things started, they wanted in, and one was a little disrespectful, and a little like, hey, you know, I... Don't, don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win, right? And that's the deal. Because I am working on a larger plot project in the sandbox. So more stuff's coming. Uh, with that, I will say, which the price is still $9.95, will be till Friday. You should get on the Power of Six productivity course. It is going to probably be part of everything I do going forward. Links here plus other stuff. Now, let's talk about today's subject. When should you give up? This is a very common dynamic being a hustler, entrepreneur. At some point, you're going to have to ask yourself if this enterprise uh, endeavor is worth it. And one of the things that happened, and I saw this when everyone ran off the cliff, such as Lemmings, when the storage auction thing came out, people quitting their jobs, withdrawing down their 401ks, and that was the voice of reason in the madness. Don't do it, Willie! And then they, Willie still did it, and then shit went south, and Willie's mad. But he wasn't mad at me, because I didn't lie to Willie. First thing I said, shit's hard. You can make great money, but you're going to earn it. You're going to man up. You're going to woman up. You're going to do all of that. And some people listened. Some people learned. And some people made a lot of money. And other people gave up. Now, for the purpose of this conversation, we are going to have to learn how to ask better questions. See, that's the question I get. Like, how long should I do this? Should I do it three months? Should I do it six months? Should I do it, you know, a year? The real issue is you then ask yourself the right question. Does this business align with my personal philosophy and personal goals? Because if it doesn't, you shouldn't be doing it. Now, there are things that I could do to make more money. Uh, niche marketing. And I'm not interested in that stuff because it doesn't speak to me. I'm not interested in it, and it doesn't align with my personal goals and philosophy. So it's immediately off the development map. Where it's like, we're not going to do it because it doesn't jive with the philosophy. 
Which goes to the next question. Have you defined your life? Have you defined your success? Or have you let other people do it for you? I've had numerous people talk smack. It's like, oh, you talk about money and you don't own the house. Well, you will tell you why I don't own the house. I did the math. The house, for the last six, seven years, really wasn't an asset for most people. Some people, yes, for most people, no. Unless you're going to buy it and hold it forever and leave it into the family where once it's paid off, then it becomes a revenue-generating source of income. Only at that point, when it leaves the bank's balance sheet and gets on yours, does it become an asset. Once again, my personal philosophy, goals, ambitions, is about content creation. So, one of the things that I did was eliminate distractions. I'm a renter. Yes, I rent an apartment. Because I don't have to worry about shit. I don't have to cut grass, water, something happens. I pick up the phone, call someone, and it is handled. That suits my lifestyle. Let me say that again. My lifestyle and things that I want to do. Because I am creating assets. I'm going to say that again. I am creating assets. The book that I wrote, 2009, revamped 2010 to 11, How to Make Money from uh, what's Self Storage Unit Auctions, A to Z, paid me income for years. Does your house that you have a mortgage on pay you income right now? Even if you bought it and you have a rent in there, is it paying you income? Chances are not. No. I mean, it's not even paying you the money I make on YouTube per month. So, until you get to that situation, no, it's not. Which goes back to my question. Have you defined your success? What success to me may be poverty to you. What success to me may not be success to you because it is your success. What do you want to do with your life? What is your life plan? Where are you going with this thing? What are your core philosophies? What do you want to leave your kids? Have you asked yourself these questions? Have you put that out in the universe? Because this is what most of you are doing. You are, by default, get money hustlers. I have to live. I have to get money. Not a bad place to be, but a terrible place to stay. You want to become a strategic hustler. Like you, I was a get money hustler. Had to get money, had to pay bills, had to live, had to, hey, had to do what I had to do. But if you stay in a get money hustler posture for the rest of your life, the minute that your hustle skills degrade, and they will, the market changes, it will, you're in trouble. So you need to build some assets. You need to create assets. And these are things that are worth money or produce money. That's what I am focusing on doing. That's my definition of success, creating assets. Your definition of success may be totally different, which is cool. We're all different people, different walks of life. But if you do not define your success, then you really don't know when you should give up because you don't know what you're fighting for. There are many of you out there doing shit just to do shit and wonder why it's not working out. Once you develop a personal philosophy, once you develop some solid, concrete life goals that you want to achieve based in reality, you're going to have so much information and direction for what you should and what you should not do, what you should engage in, what you should not. Uh, I make this joke that I'm going to get into the weed business when it comes to Georgia in about 10 years. Those southern states will be the last holdouts, you can believe that. And really, in my heart of hearts, I know I'm not going to do it because I don't believe in drug consumption. Never been high, never been drunk. I know it's strange, but I just don't believe in it. If you choose to do that, that's your thing. I don't believe in it, and I'm not going to profit from it. As lucrative as it's going to be, I'm going to work on something else because it doesn't work with my philosophy. I do believe in, you know, drugs are harmful. That's my belief. They're harmful. I believe alcohol is harmful. And essentially, I know these things used in moderation are not harmful. But by the number of DUIs, <laughs> dead people, overdoses, many people are not using these things in moderation. So that's me. That's my philosophy. Once you hammer down 
who you are, where you're going, what you want to be, what kind of legacy you want to have, then you can make a better decision on when you want to give up. This channel was instituted to sell my products. That's the only reason it existed. The purpose of this channel has changed, but the core mission, freedom of one blending Cameron, has not. That's my core mission, freedom. Physical, financial freedom, that's my core mission. So as long as this channel continues to do that or help achieve that aim, whatever it does, it is still on point. There are many people, well, Glendon, you know, since you were such a resale god, duh, you were, why'd you give it up? Because it did not suit my core mission, which changed when I became a writer. For many people to do something like that, they couldn't do it because they're a little coward. They're not going to change their life, change how they think. Mm -mm, no, no, mm -mm, no, we're going to keep doing the same shit because you are gutless and don't know how to do anything else. And more importantly, you don't want to go through the embarrassment of not knowing how to do stuff. My first few years as a writer were rocky. Lots of mistakes were made. But I embraced the change and kept moving. I had a lot to learn. I still have a great deal to learn. It's an ever-going process. But I made the change because this business model even though it doesn't pay as much money, I know everyone's about, it's all about money, ain't a damn thing funny. Doesn't pay as much money up front as the storage auction business. However, I don't have the stressors of the storage auction business, which to me is a form of wealth. Also, I have never had this much control of my time in life and had an income, ever. I mean, uh, I'm coming back from the gym in the middle of the day. I like to go there because there's no one there and I can do my work routine, bam, 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 and not have to uh, wait on someone texting while they're supposed to be benching. I don't have to go to that because there's nobody there. I am in and out of the gym in about an hour and 15 minutes because there's no one there. If I had a regular gig, job, or in the storage auction business, I would be working out really, really early in the morning or late at night to get it in versus in the middle of the day when everyone else is at work, like you. So, that's part of the wealth component of this. The second part, time. When you have control of your time, you have the most important resource to become wealthy. I didn't have that in the storage auction business. I ran shit, but I didn't have it because I didn't set the auction schedule. The storage facilities did. I didn't set the auction days. The storage facilities did. I didn't really decide unless I rented the unit when I was going to clean it out. There was many things that I had no say-so over that were part of the dynamic of being a storage auction buyer. That I hated. I hated when I couldn't get a 24-hour gate coat. I hated that shit because it slowed me down. Now, I don't have to deal with those constraints because I have total 100% control of my time and I can use that to create more freedom. So when you're asking yourself, when should you give up? When should you stop? Better questions, is this a business that I need to be in? Is this business a proper vehicle to get me to my financial freedom, whatever destination? Those are the important questions, not when should I give up, because this channel has changed directions several times. Yep, changed directions, but the core mission has never changed. See, that's the thing. That is always a constant. There's always going to be this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to make it do what it do. It's not going to change. We're going to keep going with that. We're going to keep rolling with that because that's the mission. That's job number one. That's, in that's carved in stone in my bedroom. Freedom. So once you get your core mission together, 
then put all this other stuff around it, the business. I mean, you might really be in the business right now because you're there because it feels good or, you know, it looks good or you can get some money, but you hate it. I didn't hate the storage auction business. There are certain components about it that I hate it, but I loved about 80% of it, maybe 90%. But that's one of the reasons that I was able to do it for so long. I there's do I like everything about the writing lifestyle in that market lifestyle? Mm, there's a bunch of shit I hate, but I like about ninety percent of it, <laughs> so I'm in it to win it. And you you got to get there. Now let's talk about some critical things. When you start a new business, expect not to make a lot of money. Expect to work very hard for very little. Expect to not receive remunerations for the massive effort that you put out until much later. That's the big hiccup. And that is what produces this question. When should I give up? If you have defined your life purpose, if you have your core mission on point, it's not that question doesn't come up. The question turns into, okay, well, this isn't really working for the core mission. So we need to develop a new battle plan. We need to have a new strategy. We should uh, make this thing happen in a different manner. You see, the better your information, the better your structure, the better your questions will be. It's not really about giving up. It's about fulfilling the mission. If you gotta go around the mountain and that fulfills the mission, then you go around the mountain. If you gotta go under, you go under. If you need to get some flying squirrels with special silk parachutes to float you over the top, you go out and recruit the damn squirrels because they help you achieve the mission. The mission is the most important thing, not how you get to the mission, including, you know, no illegal stuff. Let me be real clear about that because someone would go, well, Glenn would say, you know, by all means necessary, so if I had to rob a motherfucker, no, I ain't say that. I'm being real clear because people tend to take things out of context and extrapolate the data for their own purpose, self-indulgent moments. But if you got to get those flying squirrels with silk parachutes, do it. So essentially, what I'm telling you is you have some work to do. You got to ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? I am amazed at how many people that I sit down with and I talk to on a consulting basis that are only doing what they're doing for money and they wonder why they're unhappy. At some point, you must transcend being a get money hustler and move to a strategic hustler where you're doing it from strategy, you're enjoying the game, you're having fun. You're just like, okay, I'm doing this because it's fulfilling. And do not mistake this for following your passion bullshit. What I have learned is if you become good at something, it's amazing how that can become a passion. It's amazing how that thing that you hated to do that was a distraction, that was a problem that you just like, I don't want to do it, mama. Then you became good at it. Now you start bragging about it like, yeah, man, my brother made me use that, get on that skateboard. I hate that shit. But now I can do this trick, this trick, and I can go in the pool and do a double flip back something, whatever the fuck they do. And all of a sudden you're bragging about it and you got your boys taking YouTube videos on this thing that scared you and you didn't want to do. But because you became good at it, now it's just your passion. Don't pick a passion. Pick something to become good at, and it'll become your passion. You'll develop it. You'll make it a passion. I believe that's much healthier, more sane than following some whim that's really not a true goal or some true vo you know, vocation in your life. That you just got to do it. You've you got to do this thing or it's just not going to happen. I mean, your, your life depends on you doing this thing. Most of you don't have that shit. Don't even tell me. I, I, I see the questions. Because you haven't asked yourself, what is the core mission? Where do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to leave to your kid? You haven't asked yourself that. Because when you do, 
you get to a different level. Then you mash and you do the mashup. You do the skill set dream mashup. Put all that stuff together and then it becomes very, very powerful. Then you're operating on purpose. Then you're operating with direction, clarity. When certain things present themselves, you go to your, your light mail, okay, oh, this doesn't jive. This is incongruent with what's here, so I'm not gonna do it. It's a very simple process once you do that first. But when you don't do the purpose process first, when you don't really ask yourself those questions, everything's an option. I'm gonna tell you something about options. Options are only as good as the person who's exercising them. You can have a whole bunch of options, but if you're a shitty person, you're gonna have shitty options. If you're a high caliber person, you're gonna have high caliber options. Your options are predicated on you, not the option itself. And that's why people are like, hey, and I'm gonna tell you something else. Uh, I'm in the gym, right? You know the workout that I'm doing that's been very effective? It was developed in the 50s. Yes, it was developed in the 1950s and it's still effective. This is something else and this is what I call shiny object syndrome. Hey, new information, shiny object, blah, blah, blah. People jump on it. When, if you buckle down, if you, you know, you don't like me or you don't want to do this stuff that I have in the G-verse, that's cool. Find someone you like, two or three people, that's it. Two or three that you really respect and you're getting fed and hammer that shit. Hammer the fuck out of that shit. I was in a, listening to podcast and they were talking about social media. I turned YouTube into my most important social media aspect. I have more interaction until I created Hustler University, which you should join, it's free. I had way more interaction here on YouTube than any other place, including Facebook, because I designed it that way. Many people are like, what's the best uh, social media platform you should get on? What's the, and that's the wrong question, what's the best social media platform that works for what you're doing? That's the better question. YouTube worked great for what I was doing. It still does. It's very passive. So that that's another thing. But if you just get some really good information, and that's one of the reasons I am pushing hard to make better information and content for you that is evergreen, meaning long-term, that this shit, the principles, because once again, going to the channel, the channel's core mission is the same, which is principle but how that principle is uh, executed, that changes. So if I can give you solid principles that you can use year after year after year, then I'm doing my job. That's what I'm working to do. And that's the reason I've gone into creation mode and I've really been thinking and pondering and asking these questions like, what's, you know, why, why, why do I keep getting that question? Why is everyone's like, when should I give up? When should I bail? And then it hit me. The reason that you are arriving to that point so quickly is you haven't defined what success is to you. Once you define what success is to you, the, the quick bail thing is not going to happen as often. It's like, and many writers do this, it's like starting a book and having no freaking idea what you're going to write about. It's just it's, it's a story and you're just going to let it develop. There are so many people that have written books that way that were never finished. It's unfunny. It's just not funny. It's the wrong way to go. But some food for you to chew on. Some things for you to think about. We got a few offers here, and I got a special offer here. Special. It's here at the end of the video for a reason. Don't tell nobody. You do what you need to do. Take advantage, and just check out the boxes. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.